In this video, I'm going to give you a quick explanation of what a radial flow filter is. G'day, welcome to Mad Scientist Prospecting. My name is Stuart Chignall, and this video is in response to a video done by Keith Bowen of Hard Rock University, and there's a link to his channel in the description below. He went through a bunch of different uh, mechanisms, apparatus that you can use to set to settle materials out of a flow rather than having to use screens. But he left one out, and this is one that I know from my aquaculture days. Lucky, could you stop sque squeezing and chewing on that thing? It's very annoying. Here, give me it here. <laughs> ah. Now, I know radial flow settlers from my work with aquaculture. Now in aquaculture we're trying to remove fish poo and fish poo has a specific gravity that is very close to water. Uh, from memory it's 1.01 or less. And <laughs> compared to trying to remove particles of minerals or you know quartz or whatever that's uh, that's a lot easier. Whereas fish poo, very hard to separate via gravity. But you can do it really well. And one of the ways you can do it really well is with these radial flow cells. Now they've got three big advantages. The first is that they're so much more compact than a standard settling basin. Take up a lot smaller footprint. The second reason is that they're much more effective. Uh, there are a number of other settling type devices that are designed to take up less room than a settling basin. And of them, the radial flow settler is the best. Third major advantage of them is that even though there are some other settling devices that do get a, a, remove a greater percentage of the total solid material in the flow, they have a much, much, much higher maintenance budget to keep them working. You can buy these radial flow settlers commercially made. They do cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. But even commercial aquaculture operations have got to the point where they don't bother. They just make them up themselves because they're so easy to make from off-the-shelf components. For example, take a 200-litre barrel, a 20-litre bucket, cut the bottom off the bucket, and that is what you use for your external and internal cylinders. The rest of it is just commonly available plumbing fittings. So how do these work? Well... The flow comes in via the influent pipe or the delivery pipe with all the water and the solids in it. In the commercially made ones, the inlet pipe is pointing up in the center cylinder, so the flow goes up and then hits the surface of the water and then falls down and slows down. In ones you make up yourself, it's a lot easier to have the inlet pipe coming in from the top, but so that you don't have a, a jet of water shooting down through the center of that central cylinder, it's a good idea to put a baffle plate in to kind of redirect the flow, uh, to you know to slow it down, to make maximum use of that central cylinder where the water can begin to really slow down in velocity and allow settling to take place. Now as the water flows down through that central cylinder, moving you know, very slowly, as it begins to get to the space underneath, you get a lot of settling happening and all the solid particles falling down to the bottom of the tank. As the flow then turns and starts going back up the outside of the central cylinder, the flow speed is decreased even more. And it's, Now it's not clear from, you know, from the cross-sectional diagram, but if you're looking at it from above, you can see that the central cylinder is a lot smaller in cross-sectional area than the outside area. And it in a standard aquaculture operation, you have these set up so that the cross-sectional area of the central cylinder is one-fifth of the size of the outside area. And that means that you get almost, well, pretty much anything that you can settle out via gravity in a reasonable space of time settles to the bottom of the tank. But how do we use these in prospecting or mining or processing? Well, the first thing you can use them just as they are without any modification is you use them to clean up your water before you return it to the pump. And that means a lot less abrasion, wear and tear on your pump and your pipes and hoses and etc. And that's a good thing in a recirculating operation. The second thing you can do with these, and it, which would require a little bit of modification and a little bit of fiddling with to get it right. By having a series of radial flow settlers with different proportions relative to the flow, the central cylinder, the outside tank, you can create a series of of settlers where 
you will be able to classify the material that you're running through them according to its fluid dynamic properties, basically according to its surface to area mass ratio. The particles that have a spherical shape will tend to sink faster than particles that are flat and rough and all sorts of weird shapes. Similarly, particles that are heavy will sink faster than particles that are light. If the fluid that you're running, that's a dope. no, that's getting complicated. Go ignore that. Just okay. They, heavy stuff it sinks faster than light stuff. And once you've done that, then you can take the different classifications, and with a little bit of experimentation, you'll be able to run them through a screen and remove all the big and the boring stuff, leaving you with the stuff that you're interested in, which is probably going to be gold and sulfides or oxides of what of various types. Hope that made sense. If it doesn't, I'm up for questions in the comments. Um, check out Keith Bowen's stuff on Hard Rock University, and I will catch you guys in the, in the next video. In the future, when I build my trailer-mounted recirculating operation, I'm going to be using these to, to make that work. So if you want to see those, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you know when they come out. Catch you later. Bye-bye.